So something I wanted to cover is that on this setup with the Jackson Racing Supercharger, you have a spacer behind the alternator bracket. And that houses a an additional bracket that can hold or ec extra support on the pulley system for that supercharger. So you have to remove this. Now in a normal timing chain or timing belt removal, you don't have to remove this bracket because everything is accessible but in order to get to the 10 millimeter cover bolts you need to remove that because it covers one not a problem we'll just remove it. something i wanted to talk about is the little stubborn well it's not little but the, the 19 millimeter crankshaft bolt so that 19 millimeter crankshaft bolt can be one of the biggest pain in the rears if you're not equipped to handle it. So I recommend that you look out, uh, you look around, see if you can find tools or whatever you need. You can do it by hand with some breaker bars. The crankshaft pulley has a 50 millimeter attachment which allows for the crankshaft pulley to not move while you're trying to loosen the 19 millimeter bolt. That attachment, you can find that on Amazon on the Preludes. I had to modify mine, at least the one I bought. I had to take about an inch off of it. And I had to do that because the unibody takes up like a eighth or a quarter inch of space right next to, uh, right next to where you're trying to put this tool in this freaking as you can tell I took an inch off of that I took an inch off of this so I could slide it from behind this unibody to get it into the crankshaft pulley so here's here's that that I took off as you can tell so I mean yeah these things are relatively cheap you know 20 30 whatever dollars but uh, Unfortunately, my efforts with a three foot breaker bar holding the crank pulley and a three foot breaker bar with extensions coming out, a jack stand holding those extensions while I pushed down. I felt I would, you know, I'm almost 200 pounds, I put my back into it, but it didn't seem to matter, didn't budge whatsoever. I tried multiple times. I had my wife come out and give me a hand. That was a no-go. Did not move. Called a buddy from work. He came, you know, right after work, and he gave it his all. And this guy is pretty stout, relatively strong. Got a lot more muscle than me. He said that, uh, you know, pushing down on it, you can see the deflection in your breaker bar. Uh, let's try pulling up. We got a lot more strength pulling up. Only problem with that is, is that the when you're pulling up, the extensions that come out past the fender here, they don't, you know, those extensions, they got nothing pushing down on it. So I leaned on it. I put my foot on it, um, and he, you know, he's a stout guy. He pulled up on that thing, and the motor raised a little bit. I mean, we're talking. This guy's strong. It didn't budge. It was ridiculous. So I thought, well, I'll do the inspection and we'll move on. No point in wasting all my time and everyone else's time if we can't get that removed. Uh, at some point, I plan on taking the motor out, either rebuilding it or sleeving it or doing something else. But until then, I better just do an inspection and move on. That looks like it had been replaced at some point in this car's life. Unfortunately, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it another try with something else. So I bought the Harbor Freight Special Electric Impact, rated at 1,000 breakaway foot-pounds of torque. 
And that didn't do anything. Literally, did not. Even, I mean, I could have took a quarter inch ratchet to it and there's about just as much strength behind it. I like to get back. So I took it back and I got the three quarter, 1700 foot pound impact gun. I've never thought I would need one of these. I've been, you know, you're talking 250 bucks. I didn't really want to put money into that kind of object as it were. But anyway, I got an eight gallon compressor. I set to 100 PSI. I have a 50 foot hose. Well, actually, I have a 100 foot hose, but uh, that's two different 50 footers. So I shortened it up, maxed everything out, and I let that three quarter inch just hammer on it. And after about four refills of the tank, four or five, it finally loosened. Victory, celebration. So I now have a tool specifically just for one bolt. But hey, if that's what you got to do, I just wanted to uh, let you know that's what it took to remove said bolt. So we got this lower cover. We're just about there. There's got to be a few more bolts here. Uh, just got to find them. And we'll be set to see where we're at and do an inspection. Of seals I've got all new seals so we're gonna replace them anyway but we'll do an inspection belt seals water pump not touching that oil pump I've never had a problem with the oil pump pressure except for the oil cooler seal which just fell apart on me and that's why I replace it every about 5,000 6,000 miles anyway so I'm gonna move forward just wanted to give you a couple little tips there hopefully that'll help